But that's kind of where it ends a little bit with Sports Card Investor. I think he fits into this hobby very well. There's a, a large segment of this hobby, not necessarily you viewing this, um, because our uh, the viewers and the fans of our channel tend to be a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more independent, a little bit more free thinking. But there's a large segment of the hobby that is not free thinking, that needs somebody to tell them what the grade of the card is, what to buy. Can't tell me how many times I've been on Twitter and I've seen people post pictures of them standing in Walmart and they stand in front of the card aisle and they're like, what should I buy? And it's like, you know, that's like me going to the Rolex shop and, and asking you guys which one I should buy or going to the car dealership and asking you, should I get the four cylinder or the six cylinder? I mean, are you that big of a, a beta male that you can't decide uh, what trading cards that you can buy? So there's certainly a large segment of the hobby that actually needs that assistance. I need you to tell me what to grade, need you to tell me what to buy, need you to tell me what to sell, need you to kind of guide me through the whole thing, almost like you're a baby and you need to be fed with a bottle or with a spoon. And so there's certainly enough of those people in this hobby where uh, someone like Sports Card Investor can not only thrive, but really um, be very successful. Um, but, you know, look, here's the thing about Sports Card Investor. If he tr was truly a savant in terms of predicting the price movement of cards, and certainly anybody out there could have seen this coming. Okay, look at the graphs of sports cards out there. You see that, that a lot of them started rising actually in the March, April, May of 2020 when, guess what? Nobody was playing. Nobody was playing. I remember watching Lonzo Ball cards and Kyle Kuzma cards and Zion Williamson cards and all these cards start rising in value astronomically when all the leagues were canceled and there were no games being played. So that should have told you right there that sports cards aren't necessarily event driven. So the values of cards are not really event driven, but all you'd hear from not only sports card investors, but a lot of these guys that started giving it advice, a lot of these guys were just back into the hobby for a year or two as well. And sports card investor will, will not hide this. In fact, most of the guys here on YouTube will not hide this. The fact that they collected back in the eighties and nineties when times were a lot simpler and they got back into it just over the last year or two. And so a lot of these guys really haven't been buying and selling cards, really haven't been monitoring the price action of cards when cards were not necessarily the hottest thing on the block. Those are the people that were giving you the accurate reflection on the cards. And so this idea that the playoffs or what they do in a game or what they do on the court or the field really has a big impact on card values, not necessarily, okay? And I think the pandemic really highlighted that. The other thing that they should have started connecting the dots to was the fact that when Giannis Antetokounmpo won the NBA Finals, his cards barely moved. And so that should have been a big red flag to anybody saying, look, the event are not driving these card values. Maybe the values have already gotten pulled forward. The other thing that these guys didn't correctly identify is we saw ultra modern cards really start to soar. So the Luka Doncic, the uh, Zion Williamson's, and then it wasn't until later in 2020, kind of the fall and winter time, when we saw Michael Jordan and Kobe and Shaq's and like Bo Jackson's, like uh, these cards started really taking off and started surpassing a lot of the ultra modern cards. None of these guys really even foresaw that or predicted that. So none of their predictions, we could go through and look at how they predicted Tyler Hero, looked how they predicted John Morant, looked how they predicted individual players. But the fact is, none of them were accurate on virtually anything, okay? It's really easy in an upward trajectory market, something like the stock market or home values to say, yeah, I think home values are gonna go up. Yeah, I think Apple stock is going to go up. Look, you don't need to be an investment advisor or a real estate agent to say those types of things when the market goes up, but to actually foresee these things is actually really difficult. I think it's really difficult in the sports card trading market. So while I commend the sports card investor guy on the entertainment value of his content, certainly the regularity he's posted com content. Uh, I think it's absolutely commendable. And I think it's something that you can absolutely learn for him out there. But in terms of wanting to actually predict card values and the rationale behind it, he couldn't have been more off in terms of the on-field performance has nothing to do, in my opinion, to what the card values are. And certainly, being able to foresee the ultra modern starting to become maybe a little overheated and people shifting back to Michael Jordan's and maybe vintage cards. He didn't foresee that either. And none of these guys 
first saw that card values eventually would start tanking and now we're back to levels that we really see haven't seen in maybe uh, you know about two years on these time frames and so a lot of them are going to get on and say well look cards are still up from when i got back in well nobody was buying cards back then you look at the volume charts you can look a lot of these apps like card ladder and all these other ones they have volume charts like nobody was buying these cards back when they were, they were these prices two years ago, everybody piled in at the top. So most people, in fact, the vast majority of people are underwater on these quote unquote investments. And so look, going forward, we're not going to see these cards recover. These cards are not going to go back in value. It's not going to go back to the where it was back in 2020 or even early 2021. We're not going to see that. Okay. These cards, th just the market has gone by these cards. So last thing we'll address here on the channel is I believe the sports card investor guy put up a video the other day, uh, you know, talking about how uh, it's basically it was a video directed towards us, how we're, we're putting out a lot of negativity and the drama. And to go along with the first segment, I know that Jeff Wilson is just back into the hobby. He hasn't been in this hobby for very long. He probably doesn't realize sportscardradio.com has been around for 14 years. There's thousands of articles on there. Panini America has sent me tens of thousands of dollars in products because they recognize the value. Tops has sent me thousands of dollars worth of products because they recognize the traffic and the value that comes from sportscardradio.com. Upper Deck has sent us thousands of dollars in product. Upper Deck to this day still forwards us information about their products and forwards us checklists and pictures and promos and different things that they're working on. To this day, they personally send this stuff to us because they recognize the value and the traffic that comes from sportscardradio.com. I understand uh, most of you guys, uh, you know, haven't got off YouTube or Instagram, and certainly Jeff Wilson probably follows in, in, in that sense. Um, look, I've started every video that I've talked about with Sports Card Investor that I actually think he's a net positive. I think you can learn from this guy. He uploads stuff to YouTube two or three times a week. I think you can learn from that. Uh, whether, But this guy, this is a guy that's charged for picks. This is a guy that's charged for his service to actually get cards. That I think is a big no-no. I think he turned that off really quick. He got advised that that was a bad idea. But I think it's incredibly rich. A lot of these guys that got back in the hobby at the, the peak of the market or near peak of the market and were telling you to buy, it's investments, it's great, it's this, that, and the other. And now cards have tanked and now all of a sudden they're starting to, to turn their attention and, and, and not accept some of their criticism that certainly would come your way, okay? Um, so I think guys like Jeff don't understand like we've buried a, a ton of people in this industry and by you know passively aggressively posting videos that are about us is not going to help mr wilson there's going to be more videos about you more videos in a, showing you in a negative light more videos showing your channel in a negative light and guess what it's like a, a car crash they're probably going to get a lot of views and a, and a lot of attention and quite frankly that's okay with me. You guys can post whatever you want about me. You guys can say whatever you want about me. It's actually good for my brand and it's good for my channel. So my message to the sports card investor, my, invest my advice to Mojo Sports, my advice to anybody, stay in your lane. If you create G-rated content, stay there, okay? You guys are starting to remind me of the situation that's happening with Joe Rogan. So Joe Rogan's, you know, everybody is saying, hey, we got we to gotta censor Joe Rogan and take him down because we don't like his content. That, that's not fair, okay? And I'm not comparing myself to Joe Rogan. In fact, Joe Rogan's one show of his is probably bigger than the entire sports card industry. So none of us can compare ourselves to him. But you guys are acting like everybody else trying to cancel out Joe Rogan, okay? Just because I put out content you don't like, you don't agree with, doesn't mean that you get to go out there and, and say, hey, don't watch him, don't do not do this, okay? I've never told anybody, don't watch Sports Card Investor, don't watch Mojo Break, don't watch Mojo Sports, okay? I've told you the truth about these guys. The fact that they're just recently back into the hobby, most of them still live with their mom and their dad. In the case of Sports Card Investor, I think he's incredibly new and incredibly green when it comes to this industry. I don't think he has very good advice, but you're more than welcome to tune into this content. And I think the regularity is he posts and the entertainment value is there. So if you wanna watch, go ahead. And if you don't wanna watch this channel and you think we're too negative, 
that's fine with me guys because guess what i'll be going to the super bowl on sunday and i'll be paying for it with all the positive content that we've posted over at sports card radio i won't be paying for my ten thousand dollar super bowl ticket on sunday for all the negative stuff that's like pennies i don't even see that money i don't even recognize that money but we've put up thousands of articles and hundreds of videos here on YouTube, all positive about the hobby, all posting it in a positive light. The fact that none of you guys recognize that or pay any attention to it really shows your naivety and really shows your immaturity as well. Hello, sports card investors. That's right. Hopefully today finds you in a safe space as we run down the year over year investments as predicted by your hobby hero, Jeff Wilson over at sports card investor. That's right. One year ago in February, 2021, he told you to buy, sell, or hold these 12 cards that we're about to see. And we're going to see if one year later he was right or wrong. You know, next month we'll probably get into his $1 million PPP loan and him threatening to sue people on Twitter. But for now, let's focus on how disastrous his videos were one year ago. We'll start with Joel Embiid. Jeff loved the Sixers last year and he told you to buy. Even flex some of his Embiid cards that he has in his collection. Well, the 76ers are still good. Embiid might win MVP this year and the card is still down huge year over year. Um, this card doesn't have a massive population like some other cards we'll see soon. Makes you wonder what will guys like, you know, De'Aaron Fox and Donovan Mitchell have to do to ever reach their all-time highs again. Uh, Embiid, maybe if they win the finals and he's finals MVP, perhaps this card approaches 650 again. Um, we'd have to see, but this is not a good sign um, for Embiid or other cards that have much, much higher populations than this one. Moving on to baseball, it just seems like Jeff doesn't really know that much about baseball. Maybe he hasn't watched it that much. Um, he just seems more interested in basketball and a little bit about, you know, quarterbacks and football. So I'm not surprised he missed this one on Nolan Arenado. He told you to buy it 210. It fell to 100. This is just after he got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. But, you know, here in the future, guys like Jeff and kind of these new guys who have come along in the last couple of years, you're going to have to get interested in baseball because you're not going to see these like broad based moves in sports cards like you have over the last couple of years. You're going to have to individually pick players and some of those really underserved top prospects who disappear for a few years in the minor leagues at A-ball, double-A, triple-A and so forth. And they, they kind of get off the radar. And so you're going to have to go in there and know when to buy those cards and understand baseball and understand uh, those players, I think, uh, more in the future than you were in the last couple of years when you could just cherry pick, you know, top quarterbacks and kind of top um, NBA players. Next card up, 2017 Prism De'Aaron Fox rookie card PSA 10 he told you Jeff told you to hold this one at $220 it's fallen all the way to 50 Jeff is just you know emotionally attached to modern basketball so it's rare that he even tells you to sell any modern basketball he's, he's just super emotionally attached to that you can see that in these videos you can see that in some of his other videos from February that we'll talk about a little bit later just super e either emotionally or or financially invested into, or probably both, modern NBA basketball at this time, and maybe even still. And so um, he just makes some really horrible calls on basketball players like De'Aaron Fox. Fourth card, Rob Gronkowski, 2010 Tops PSA 10 rookie card. Told you to buy this one. His rationale was he thought uh, Gronk was going to retire and that he'd be remain as popular or more popular after his career was over and thus his cards would continue to accelerate. Um, I don't actually necessarily disagree with him. You know, this card has gone down because, you know, the broader market has declined, but it actually hasn't declined that much. The population on something like this is pretty low. And so in the long run, Jeff may turn out to be right on this one. But in the short term, this card is still down a hefty amount and Jeff is now over four. Next card, and this is almost like cheating if you're a content creator, uh, Deshaun Watson. We're going to keep this a family show, but you can Google what he was facing uh, this time last year. And so anybody with half a brain in the sports card world would have told you to sell this guy's cards. And that's exactly what Jeff uh, did. And of course, this card has gone down for a number of reasons, including, you know, Deshaun Watson's kind of uh, legal status. So this $700 loss remarkably 
gets Jeff back into the positive on the money side. But again, this is an absolutely cheap call here because if you Google what Deshaun Watson was facing last year, anybody with half a brain was telling you to sell this guy's cards. Next one, just another cheap one. Uh, you know, the Cowboys, when Jeff made this call to sell the Zeke Elliott rookie card PSA 10, Zeke Elliott wasn't playing in the playoffs. So the Cowboys were out of it. Uh, the, of course, this card was probably going to have a little bit of a slide in the offseason. So anyways, Jeff has now regained some footing and is now two and four and back in the positive on the money side. Back to basketball, and this is where Jeff makes his emotional and kind of financial mistakes. Ben Simmons, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum. Again, three overpopulated cards, three cards that had been on a major, major heater, and three guys who, again, who are rising stars in the league but certainly haven't done anything or made it. Ben Simmons can't even shoot or shoot free throws, so I don't know why you would want to ever collect this guy's card from the day he got into the league. But with these three losses, this puts uh, Jeff massively behind the eight ball as we go to the last three cards that he predicted last year in February. Next card, and this just shows how bad Jeff is at sports card investing. The month prior, he told you to sell this cards and wins card. Literally told you to sell it. And now he's back telling you to buy it. Only because he had gotten traded to the Colts or whatever had happened. So he treats these cards like a fantasy football team. You know, oh, Carson wins. Opportunity opens up. Buy his card. That's not necessarily how things work across all sports. So Jeff's just super naive, super new, and these videos just prove it out. Card after card after card and prediction after prediction. Back to baseball. Jeff gets this one right. Iconic cards like this Pujols was on a major heater. If you remember back last year, the Jordan rookies and all that kind of stuff was just super hot back in January and February of last year. So Jeff told you to sell this Pujols because, you know, the card was on a heater and Pujols himself, you know, was wrapping up the end of his career. So a win for Jeff before a very final card. Last card, Killing in Mbappe, 2018 Prism, PSA 10. Jeff was telling you to buy this sucker at around 1200 This thing's fallen all the way to around 360 Can somebody tell these new sports card investors that nobody in America cares about soccer unless you're a soccer mom and you're one of those little rich kids? Period. Nobody cares about soccer. I get that it's growing a little bit but it's about the equivalent of hockey in this country, okay? Football still rules the roost in America. Basketball's right up there. Baseball is dwindling, but more people care about baseball in this country than soccer. So stop telling people to invest in soccer cards until something changes. So Jeff finishes the month of February 3 and 9 down over $2,000 absolute disastrous picks from the sports card investor Jeff Wilson. But it was a couple other videos that I do want to briefly talk about that I think are equally damaging to the hobby than making disastrous card picks uh, on your YouTube channel. Here's one of the videos he released last year in February called Seven Reasons Why Modern Cards Will Spike Again. Well, we all know that hasn't happened. And spoiler alert, let's go over quickly the seven reasons he gave. First one, he said, uh, the new basketball releases are coming out. Again, Jeff is emotionally and financially attached to these modern NBA cards. So he cares greatly about these new cards that are coming out. God, Panini should have stopped releasing cards and maybe that would have helped uh, the prices. It, it, it turns out they maybe made too many of these cards. Second thing he said, better rookie play. Hey, a lot of these rookies have played AAU or high school or college and have only played 30 games. By the time February rolls around, they're ready to chill and play video games and, and do God knows what. So I, I don't think that's necessarily true that you get better rookie play in any sport um, down the stretch. Sands a couple guys who are elite level talent. Third reason he gave busier sports schedule. Uh, turns out when some of these guys play, you guys actually see that they're not that good. So I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing. Cards went up during COVID when nobody was playing. So, um, you know, I don't think that's the best reason. Four, he said, 
collecting modern is more fun. Again, just sounds like a used car salesman who's emotionally and financially invested in his used cars telling you which cars to buy. Instead of cars, we replace these with sports cards. So collecting modern is more fun. That's very subjective. Jeff could think that. I could think something different. You could be watching and have a whole different perspective. And all of us could be right and none of us are, are wrong. So I don't know why he's trying to convince you that collecting modern is more fun. I think that's actually stupid. Fifth reason, fractional ownership companies. And we'll get into his last video. Most of you have never even heard of these companies. But again, that, a, another stupid reason and just uh, something probably lining Jeff's pocket. That's why he mentions that. Six. Iconic cards will cool down. This is the only thing that he said that has actually happened. Uh, Iconic cards did cool down with the broader market, and uh, that did happen, but it didn't mean that money would automatically shift into uh, modern cards. Turns out people had to start buying stuff that started going up with inflation, or they stopped getting money from the government, so they stopped buying sports cards. So they, they didn't just stop buying Iconic cards and then switch back into buying modern. No, they just got out of collecting and buying cards, by and large. Lastly, his seventh reason, he said just buck the trend because everybody's buying Iconic cards right now. So come back and buy modern. Again, just another used car salesman trying to get you onto their lot and tell you what to buy. The last video we'll talk about that Jeff did in February of last year was this one on dibs, fractional ownership, invest in sports card like stocks. Jeff probably has ownership or part of ownership or got some money from this company. So he did like a little hype video for them. Aren't these videos as, you know, damaging as anything on, that you see on sports card radio's channel that you guys say is negative for the hobby or bad for the hobby? When you guys promote these kind of websites that have barely been around and that nobody uses and that we're not really sure about the liquidity on, kind of like you guys that promoted Mark's cards and some of these other people, scammers in the hobby. So you're quick to promote companies that put a dollar in your pocket or give you some ownership or throw you some cards. And you're very, very quick to point the finger at people that you perceive as negative. I just hope people like Jeff turn the mirror around to themselves, watch some of their videos from a year ago with a critical eye. Are those videos negative? Are those videos negative? Are they as negative as anything you see on Sports Card Radio's channel? Ask yourself that. I've already spent way too much time on this clown. We'll be back another time, another place. Thanks for watching. See you next time. But let's start and talk about the sports card investor, Jeff Wilson. Uh, I was excited to watch his video. He said he's going to spend $400,000 on cards. I was hoping, you know, maybe he'd buy some of mine that are for sale out there um, and just start flipping them. Like, stop talking about investing in cards and just flip cards. Like, there are hundreds of thousands of people literally online every day trying to buy sports cards, whether or not they're flippers themselves or whether they're collecting for enjoyment, a particular player, particular team, um, particular love for the hobby. Hundreds of thousands of people literally actively looking for sports cards all the time. So just buy sports cards and flip them. That would be, a, in my opinion, a great, quote, investment. But instead, he bought pieces or bought the whole, I don't know what, I don't know what the structure of the deal is. He bought into this, like, they call them slab strong or whatever. I'm sure you guys seen them. They're a little, like, almost like a cell phone case for your graded cards. I honestly don't think this is a very good investment. Uh, two reasons. It, it kind of reminds me of like the cell phone accessory business. And if you look into the companies that make like your, your cell phone cases, it's actually a really tricky business because what happens if PSA decides to minorly tweak their holder and they change the size or a little bit. And now the old slab strongs don't fit on the new PSA holders. You think PSA is going to give slab strong or whatever his name is a heads up and Jeff a heads up? No, because they don't work together. PSA doesn't have a piece of this business. So any kind of change to the holder or the way PSA does things with their holder, you're now going to have to come up with a new mold and be late to the party on these things. And I just hate it. Secondly, uh, the grading company themselves could become your biggest competitor. I thought I heard that Ben Baller was working with PSA, maybe on like kind of like a diamond studded PSA case. And you've seen, uh, what's our boy name? Logan Paul walk out there with the Charizard with, when he walked out of the fight, with, which I think is pretty cool. So I think PSA themselves... <clears throat> excuse me, could become a competitor for you. 
competitor to you, competitor to Slab Shrunks, by just making their own competitive product. And when the card's graded, you could just add on a little colored thing. So I don't like this business because it's not proprietary. You're just essentially like kind of making a cell phone case for an Apple or a Google phone that you don't own and that you don't design. And that any moment these guys are actually presumably anybody else could squash you. Ultra Pro, somebody else could come along in this space and make something similar, cheaper, better. Um, so I don't like it as a business. I don't know where these things are made. Are they made in China? Are they made in the U.S.? What's the cost? What's the profit margin? We don't know these things. So it, maybe it could be a good business. I don't know. Again, you've seen the decline in slabs. We'll talk a little bit about the, you know, the junk slab area. You've seen the decline in slabs. So you're buying kind of the slab accessory business when slabs are on a decline. But perhaps if these, uh, the grading companies reopen back up and open up kind of a cheaper service level, you know, a business like this could work. But I just don't like it. If I were Jeff Wilson and I had hundreds of thousands of dollars to throw around, just buy cards and flip them. Buy cards and flip them. Buy cards and flip them. It's really that simple because you have hundreds of thousands of people searching for cards and you have a dealer network and cards that really isn't robust or have like these big, big, huge names like a Walmart or Target doesn't sell single cards. Amazon doesn't sell single cards. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to sell cards of all price points from 10 cents all the way up to $10,000. There are opportunities and, uh, you know, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on essentially a cell phone accessory business. I don't like it. Last thing, stop listening to these guys who are calling this era of card the junk slab era. Uh, this is the era of opportunity. If people are willing to sell slabs that they, you know, paid good money to get graded for $2 to $5 to $6 to $10, there's an opportunity to buy those cards and flip them. And a lot of times not even touch them yourselves. I use check out my cards a lot. I've been using alt a lot. And so I buy uh, hundreds of graded cards per week on eBay. Don't ever even send them to my house. Don't ever pay sales tax on them and uh, send them to somebody else and let them uh, list them. And I put a price on them and sell them for a margin. And maybe I'll come back you know, when I throw enough money at it and, and, and feel like, uh, you know, it's something to show, um, I'll do a video about it. But like I said, stop calling this stuff junk. People call preseason NFL football junk. And again, I've made literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in the first two, three weeks of the NFL preseason selling tickets that people essentially give away. And I think you can start doing that almost with sports cards. People are giving away a lot of these, not giving away, but pricing these slabs to just get rid of them, to just recoup some of their costs so that they can pay their bill at PSA or get their wife off their back. And there's an opportunity to buy these things. Again, the dealer network is not very strong in cards. You know, there's not these big, huge corporate dealers who can undercut you at the whim. And even you look at some of these population reports on some of these cards. Yeah, there's a few thousand, but there are a lot of people who collect sports cards. And at the again, at the right price, these things aren't junk. There's money to be made. Sekou Demboya, Tyler Hero, Brandon Clark, on and on and on. Kobe White, blah, 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 blah. I'm buying these guys all the time because guess what? If you buy them at a certain price and you relist, relist them at a very affordable price, somebody's going to buy them, whether they're a collector, a flipper, somebody else trying to make money off me. I don't care. Just flip cards. And I think analyzing, you know, whether we're in the junk air or Panini should do this or Tops or Zero Cool or da 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 da, who freaking cares? Stop calling yourself an investor and just start flipping cards, making money. That's the real business opportunity uh, in my eyes because there aren't these big, large corporate dealers and there are hundreds of thousands of people searching for sports cards. And if uh, the belief is that, you know, cards have gone on a real nice two, three year run here, but if the belief is that we're gonna see a resurgence here in the next couple years, you're gonna see like another bounce, I'd wanna have thousands of cards uh, for sale. I'd wanna be already entrenched into the market at these lower levels, presumably these lower prices. If we have kind of hit like a, a, a quote bottom, this is when I'd want to start be buying and selling, especially if people start calling stuff junk. That's when I start getting really interested. That's why I want to go in and pull up the computer and pull up eBay and buy more and buy more and buy more of these junk 
PSA 8, 9, 10 slabs that you guys are calling junk, modern. I don't care who it is. I don't care what sport. doesn't matter to me. Again, I don't buy based on potential on player. I buy strictly based on price. That's why I'm not looking up stuff. I'm not looking to see who this player is or is he playing A ball or double A? I don't care. Is the slab $5 or $8? And that'll make my decision whether or not I buy it or not. So, uh, again, that may, that may sound weird to you guys because I, have, I actually haven't heard a lot of people talk about that this is the way they buy and sell sports cards, just strictly based on price, not based on anything. F, I don't care about F1. I don't care about Marvel. I don't care about the hot trends. I'm literally just buying based on price because I don't really have to look up anything because I have enough experience with sports cards that I kind of know what a modern player PSA 9 should cost. I know what a 10 should cost. I know what an 8. And these are things you guys probably know too. Probably know way better than I do. Way better than I do. So anyways, gone long enough. You're freaking Woody the Woodpecker around here. At least they're not. I think that's a bird. That I don't know. Anyways, see you guys later. Next on the list a channel favorite, Jeff Wilson, sports card investor. What do you say about Jeff? You know, Jeff is probably gonna fail like he did his NFT project, probably a dozen more times. I mean, if his, his NFT project was a disaster. I don't know if you guys know, he literally sold 20 NFTs. I mean, his idea to sell video clips of group breakers opening big, big clips and sell those as NFTs might go down as one of the worst ideas in the history of sports cards. So he's gonna have some more failures, but this guy seems to be able to pull money out of his butt one way or the other. I mean, he bought into these worthless little cell phone grading accessory companies the other day to the tune of like six figures. He's hiring 20 people who seemingly do nothing all day. <laughs> so I think he's not gonna be broke. I think there might be hope for him because maybe he just keeps throwing money at something and eventually maybe he does hit a home run. His Market Movers app, that's a loser. There's no way people pay money for that when you can get everything on that app essentially for free. And with cards declining in value over the last uh, 12 months, 13 months, who the heck wants to pay for, you know, it's like, what do you need? What do you need to pay $25 a month for to tell you that your cards are going down in value? So the guy has actually not hit that many home runs and had not had that many success. My guess is this money is coming from other successes successes and other businesses and maybe this card things like a tax write-off or a wish or a hope or to keep i know he has a son where he does box breaks with his son it's probably something to you know to keep his kid involved and so forth and he probably just tries to build multiple companies and he probably sees a lot of promise in sports cards i think he's still going to be around i don't think he's going to be broke because again the money just seems to like fly out of this guy's butt so uh, I think there's hope for Jeff because he's also, you know, he'll fail at NFTs, but then he's firing six more figures at us. What's it called? The, the Whatever the cell phone accessory grading thing he bought the other day for six figures. So, you know, he's just going to keep firing until he hits one or two. So what do you think? Well, with him, I think uh, his content, if he doesn't get burnt out on content or if he doesn't let the, the criticism that is, is going to come whenever you put yourself out there, you're going to receive a lot of criticism, especially in the position he puts himself in where he's telling people what to buy, telling you what to sell, telling you what's going up, what's going down. He's going to put him into the position where he's going to receive a lot of a criticism. And he's already shown that he's had a little bit of a thin skin with that. And so if he lets that get to him, his, I think his number one success story is his channel, is his ability to put up content two to three days a week, which look, I don't care the quality of your content. I don't care what you're talking about. You could be talking about dust or you could be talking about trading cards to do it two to three times a week for, for several years like he has been is an absolute success and probably something that I personally would just double and triple down on because like you said, everything else that you touched has turned to stone and crumbled. And so, uh, you know, I think, I think we're right. I think he, he's, he's not going to find success in other parts of this hobby, but if he continues uh, to churn out the content here on YouTube, he'll have a little bit of a success with that. Now, if he's got editors and writers and producers on that, he's not going to make any money based on the views that he's getting and based on how much money you can make, uh, uh, even with sponsorships from eBay or so, uh, other companies that might want to sponsor him. He's not, not, not going to make any money off of it, 
but at least he can keep it going and, and have that as something that, that he has. But I've seen a lot of YouTube creators, especially in the stock market space over the last two years, really get burnt out and really take the criticism and, and take what people say about them and their stock picks uh, to heart. And they end up, one, one guy that I knew actually quit today, or at least supposedly quit today. So those things can happen. And I think as long as he doesn't do that, he'll be in this hobby uh, he'll be like a cockroach like we are and be in this hobby for as long as he really wants to be. His second point about flippers going to lose their shirts in this market is absolutely incorrect. The type of people that have lost their shirt are the Jeff Wilsons, the Sasha T's, all the other influencers here on YouTube. What were they telling you a year ago? Anthony Davis is a player whose cards are criminally undervalued. What were they telling you two years ago? I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray's. They were selling buy, buy and hold this new asset class. Guys, these are long-term winners. Buy and hold for the long-term. Wait till Luka goes to the Hall of Fame. Wait till Patrick Mahomes wins five Super Bowls and his cards are worth 20, 30, 40, $50,000. Some of these guys were saying, wait until he wins all NBA. Like anybody ever pays attention to that? Some of these people were telling you, wait till the playoffs. What's that? Uh, playoffs the playoffs we saw this year Steph Curry cards went down in the playoffs Luka cards down in the playoffs Tatum cards down in the playoffs people that were in the playoffs their cards went down the buy and hold the hold and hope mentality pushed by the Sasha T's pushed by the Jeff Wilson's over the last two years has been an absolute disaster the pumpers in this industry, including Jeff Wilson. When it comes to Ben Simmons, I am buying. After 24 months of steady declines in the sports card market, this guy is still producing videos where he's telling you what to buy and what to sell. You're more than welcome to listen to him if you want to. Now, over at Sports Card Radio, posted an article earlier this week, aforementioned Jeff Wilson says that he has nearly 25% of his net worth tied up into cards. Now, not necessarily the worst idea, but if you bought at the top like he did and kind of pumped everybody to buy at the top, chances are he's underwater on a lot of that. Anthony Davis is a player whose cards are criminally undervalued. I would actually argue that we're heading into a 24 month, maybe even a 36 month period where actually cards are worth acquiring. Not, maybe you wanna get to 25% and net worth of your cards. Certainly those of you that live at home with your mom and dad in the basement, like Mojo Sports. I wanna say this, sports card radio, you should be ashamed of yourself. Probably can afford to do that if you want to, because you don't have a mortgage payment, you might not even have a car payment. That is a Tesla. But for the rest of us uh, civilized people in the world, 25% in pictures of men seems a little rich. Now, we're back. Your hobby hero, Jeff Wilson, was giving his top five hot list the other day and didn't know what team Bo Bichette played on. Go to baseball for the number three spot and a player who might be quietly setting himself up to have an incredible postseason. Bo Bichette of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's having a nice season, and of course, we know the Dodgers are one of the favorites to win the World Series this year, and if they do, Bichette probably will be a big reason why. I think I joked on Facebook as a San Francisco Giants fan, can we stop giving the Los Angeles Dodgers so many good players? Your hobby hero, Jeff Wilson, is back in the news. You'll remember he purchased a PSA 8 star Michael Jordan rookie card at the National for $100,000 in PSA 8 condition. Well guys, a recent golden auction happened last week and one of these puppies sold for, wait for it, 67,200. Jeff Wilson's down over $30,000 in just two short months on a PSA 8 star Michael Jordan rookie card. Guys, let's hope his Will Grier investments have paid off better than his MJ investments. Hero, Jeff Wilson, AKA the sports card investor. God, what a year he had. Not only did he have a failed NFT project. Only 20 of them sold. He's seen some of his investments, not only 
the Will Greer one. I think that Will Greer right now. But other ones, including Michael Jordan rookie cards that have tanked in value just months after he purchased it. Jerry, we got Jeff Wilson. What do we think about him? About his year and going forward for the sports card investor. Well, I tell you what, the sports card investor, he first started off, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that he was talking about is pretty apparent that if you, he's deleted actually a lot of, and removed a lot of his early videos. It was clear he didn't understand a lot about the sports card business, didn't understand a lot about certain sports as well. I think his background is probably maybe a little bit more in football, but he would get in there and try to talk about basketball. He would obviously famously confuse who Bo Bichette played for. Bo Bichette of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So he really didn't have a lot of knowledge. I still don't think he has a tremendous amount of knowledge about the actual sports and maybe even in general sports cards. And let's not forget that this guy for several years was talking about trading cards as being a new asset class. He would often talk about how these were quote buy and hold investments, how he was going to hold them for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, how these were going to turn around his financial future and how they could potentially turn around your financial future as well. He constantly pumped up these trading cards like they were some kind of this great quote investment. And obviously over the last year, really in particular, that has come crashing down. And so he started to pivot his message right around when I think our prominence in terms of creating content on YouTube and kind of controlling a little bit of the narrative and the tone of the content that was being presented, he came out with a video talking about how, uh, you know, I'm tired of the negativity and I don't want you guys talking about negative stuff. We should just talk about how all these cards are going to be worth money one day and how Will Greyer is, you know, this great investment. Four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Well, right around that time, it's interesting. He actually started to having to pivot his content and you notice that after every rather large story that we have here on Sports Card Radio, whether it was Kaboom, whether it was another story that we've done in the past, well, all of a sudden he does a little roundtable discussion just a couple of days later. So I've noticed that has been kind of interesting. He's kind of pivoted his message to now, oh, we're now collecting cords. We're not really investing in them. He's obviously invested in a lot of other different companies or different types of things here in the hobby to only see those diminish in value. So Jeff Wilson, I tell you what, when we start looking out into 2024, what he does well though, is he does pivot. When he realizes he doesn't know much about sports, when he realizes that trading cards are not really that good of investment, that they really don't actually go up in value very much. And then when he buys cards consistently to only see them consistently go down and down in value, he kind of pivots the narrative. He pivots the topic. He pivots the type of content that he puts up. He does does card show vlogs. He goes around and looks at other people's collections. And now he's kind of pivoting to, oh, now I'm the sports card collector rather than the sports card investor. And so I think he'll continue to do that into next year. He obviously had that failed NFT project. He had a break. It was related to showing the best hits from breakers, which seemed rather odd to me. And so he'll continue to try different types of things. I'll give him credit for that. He's constantly looking to try different things, even though most of them fail and he'll continue to try to pump certain cards, try to pump certain industries, try to pump up certain cards that he does have a stake in, but obviously his influence has really diminished over the last year when it comes to those types of things. And just in the economic environment that we're in, it is very hard to pump a card now and watch it go up like it was maybe two years ago. You got any thoughts on Jeff? My only thoughts from watching some of his content is sometimes his son maybe makes better decisions about cards than he does. So perhaps it's time for Jeff at some point to pass the torch to his son and let him take the reins and maybe make some of the card investments over there at the Wilson household. Then sell those cards. That I still think we are going up and up and up from here and I still think this is a great time to continue to invest in sports cards. Let's talk about the continuing crumbling of the sports card market. And hey, you dorks who are going to leave a comment and say, hey, all asset classes are down. Bitcoin's down. Dogecoin's down. Real estates are down. Stocks are down. Hey, did you dorks 
When the market was going up, when everything was going up and the government was pumping billions of dollars in stimulus money, did you go to Jeff Wilson's videos and say, and leave a comment and say, hey, stocks are up, Bitcoin's up, Ethereum's up, Dogecoin's up, Shiba Inu's up, real estate's up, of course baseball cards are gonna go up. Of course you didn't, so just shut the F up. Now, more on that PPP loans, we've got golden hobby boy, Jeff Wilson. I think that Will Greer right now taking the cake out of everybody's PPP loans. He took out one originally for $1.16 million, and then he went back to the well and took out one for nearly another $1.1 million. Both of these loans were forgiven. He sat down with other hobby golden boy card collector two last week, where card collector two opined that how did sports card investor become one of the biggest names in sports cards well both of you idiots i've got news for you it's to the tune of over 2.1 million dollars worth of ppp loans that's how he built his business looks like dan the card man will also be talking about this paycheck protection scheme or scam as many people probably will like to see it because again the sports card industry was on fire during the pandemic these people did not have to take out loans. On top of that, you had relatively low interest rates. You could have gone and gotten a bank loan or some kind of other financing. That is what I personally did during the pandemic. You see here on my Amazon lending account, I took out numerous loans and you see here outstanding balances is zero because this is what a real businessman does. They take out loans that they can actually pay back with their own money. But let's circle back to Jeff Wilson who got over $2 million in PPP loans that were forgiven. He deleted his comments yesterday on our videos, but here it is. He says, the PPP loan you reference was for one of my other businesses that has nothing to do with Sports Card Investor. That business, like many, got hit hard by the pandemic and the funds helped to keep our full staff employed throughout the pandemic. Okay, I just wanna stop for a minute. You guys who simp and blow for Jeff Wilson, we'll just take that statement at face value. The money wasn't for sports card investor. It was used to keep my struggling business open. Okay, let's go over the real facts. First of all, I don't know what's true about Jeff Wilson's businesses or not. I haven't seen his books. I don't do his accounting. Secondly, he's not the most trustworthy guy in the industry. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. And third, it's the actual facts of what Jeff did after he got the loans. And frankly, it's kind of crazy. Jeff got his million dollar PPP loan forgiven. This is his second one. We'll talk about his first one in a minute, but he's got his second one forgiven. And then a few weeks later, he's in Orlando. Then a few weeks later, he's in Colorado. Then a few weeks later, he's in Boston. Then a few weeks later, he's in New York. Then a few weeks later, he's in Malibu. Literally all of this is on his personal Instagram feed. Does this look like a guy struggling to make payroll? at this other huge business that he has. What about all the cards that Jeff bought? This was a month before the first million dollar PPP loan was forgiven. Does this look like a guy struggling to pay bills at another business? Spending 40,000 at Miami Card Show, 90,000 in play at the Dallas Card Show. One day after Jeff Wilson's PPP loan is forgiven, Guess who he does a box break with? Um, Ken freaking Golden. You get, I can't even make this stuff up. Here is two months after Jeff's PPP loan is forgiven. I just spent $125,000 at a card show. Again, does this look like a guy who needs $2 million to keep some other business af afloat? Honestly, this is straight up fraud. This is, this is likely straight up fraud. I mean, the vacations, the cards you bought, but then you're saying that you needed $2 million to keep some kind of struggling business afloat? Um, Even if you take Jeff at his word, do you look at sports card investor a little differently now? Is he such a great businessman that he needed two loans from the government to kind of keep his business afloat? Lots of businesses didn't take money during the pandemic. Lots of them. Why did Jeff need the money and then go on vacation and buy a bunch of cards and put it all on YouTube and Instagram for everybody to see? The optics, even if this is all 100% legit, the optics look absolutely freaking horrible. That's not content. Jeff later tries to deflect some blame onto us 
in his comments. What he doesn't realize is, again, I'm a taxpayer. I helped pay some of those $2 million you got, buddy. So at least own it. Own it. Own it that you got the money. Own it that you didn't have to pay it back. Just own it. You went on Instagram and went on vacation after you found out you didn't have to pay back the money. Like you're all over Instagram and YouTube talking about the cards you're buying and I'm on this vacation. After you found out you didn't have to pay the money. So just own it. Own it. Own that you got the money. Own that you needed it. Own that you're not that great a businessman that you had to run to the government when there was the slightest little flu outbreak and you needed money. Just own it. Own it, Jeff. That's all you have to do. And guys, geez, I didn't get any PPB money. I got to get back to work, make a little money over here, uh, watch a little basketball. Uh, Lakers are winning. And until next time, we see you over here at Sports Card Radio. One NFT project that I have been investing in is MetaZoo. Okay, Jeff Wilson, and are you down with some PPP? Let's talk about what has happened since our last video. Lots of drama. I know some of you guys out there are loving it. I was sent some documents that say Jeff Wilson spent $1.9 million just on cards posted in his videos during the time his loans were approved and forgiven. Remember, Jeff's marketing company got $2.2 million in PPP government loans. You can see some of the cards Jeff wasted, I mean, spent some of his money on. I'll post the link to this document in the video description. I think Jeff did a response video maybe on his channel. I don't think he mentioned if he was one of the employees drawing a paycheck from his marketing company for transparency. I think he should mention if he was one of the people getting saved. Then sell those cards. And hey, without getting too far into the weeds on this PPE crap and the government stuff, I don't have a problem with the first PPE loan that Jeff took out. Not a problem at all. We had a big, massive flu outbreak in this country like the world has never freaking seen, guys. It was Jeff's double dip, dip, dip. into the PPP program that me and some other people have done videos that I'll point to have a little bit of a problem with. Because to get the second PPP loan, Jeff had to show a 25% reduction in gross sales between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. Show me a digital ads agency that didn't blow up in the pandemic. Everyone got stimulus money. Online ads and those businesses saw a sharp uptick. All his jobs could have went remote. Maybe Jeff was the only one whose online ad business didn't boom during this time. I'll post a link in the video description to somebody who did a much more rational, much more calm, and much more focused on Jeff's marketing company analyzing this situation. And I want you to check it out. The link's in the video description. Again, calm, rational, somebody who is in the business that Jeff is in, in this marketing business, did a video breaking down the PPP situation I think you should check it out. Look like an absolute steal right now. And let's stop with this talk that we shouldn't talk about this stuff. Just this week, there was a study released that says 1.4 million PPP loans show signs of fraud. I'll post that link in the video description. Please read that. That comes from actual journalists. That's not content. I think there are some signs of fraud with Jeff Wilson. Hey, if you don't think so, make your own video, you know, provide your own points, provide your own merits. By day, I invest in tech companies. Okay, on today's program, we will talk about video evidence that Jeff Wilson was involved in a pump and dump scheme involving sports cards. Essentially, Jeff was telling you, the viewer, to buy cards when according to a deleted video that I'm going to show you, Jeff was selling cards during the months he was telling you to buy them. But before we get into that, the situation with Jeff Wilson has become a lot more clear to me over the last 24 hours. I finally figured out who Jeff Wilson really is. How he is able to spend money like it's seemingly not his own. How he is able to spend all this time on sports cards, but claims to have all these other successful businesses over on the side. That's not content. You see, over the last few years, Jeff Wilson has been able to look in the camera and tell you guys that he is a successful tech investor. And many of you, when a well-dressed white man tells you something, you eat it up and believe it. But what tech companies has Jeff actually invested in? Guys, I live less than an hour from the tech capital of the world. Seriously, what tech companies has Jeff been a part of that led to some kind of huge success or some kind of big acquisition that would have made it plausible that he could spend this type of money on sports cards? Guys, even a double dip, Why are you dip, dip? $2 million PPP loan wouldn't pay for all the money Jeff Wilson blows on cards. I hate to really say this, 
but $2 million is not a lot of money. I have a nine figure bank account. Especially the way Jeff Wilson spends it. Like $2 million is not a lot of money. It's certainly not coming from his sports card investor company, which has 22 employees. That company does not make money. This is an area where I might have some level of expertise, guys. Making money on sports card content. Guys, with 22 employees, Jeff does not make money on his Market Movers app and YouTube revenue. There's not enough money coming in to pay for 22 employees and himself. There's, it's absolutely not freaking possible. So where does Jeff get his money? Like, where does the money actually come from? Well, we finally figured it out last night, thanks to everyone who emailed me over the last 24 hours. It turns out there is someone in Jeff's family who is rich, who is independently wealthy, who is a highly successful, an intelligent person and who has, according to my sources, had a huge score when she sold her business for more money than any single baseball card has ever sold for. And this person in Jeff's family probably gets paid over $1 million a year in salary and benefits to continue to run this company that netted her such a huge score. Guys, the successful person in Jeff's family is Jeff's wife, Kim. It was Kim Wilson who started a company called Social News Desk and sold it to Graham Holdings in 2014. I heard the sale of the company was huge. I couldn't verify the number, but it is a big number, enough money to definitely fund her husband going off and playing with baseball cards. In addition to selling the company, Kim is still president of that company, Social News Desk. And my guess is this woman, again, makes over a million dollars in salary and benefits per year. Social News Desk is a back end for TV stations and programs to use. And this is a real business. Again, I have sources that said this company sold for a significant amount of money back in 2014. This is the first provable, provable evidence of where Jeff got his money. Not some $2 million double dip PPP loan or a triple dip PPP loan. Dip, dip, dip. No guys, this is the first provable evidence of where Jeff got his money. Jeff cannot point to one success like the one his wife had. Period. Research Jeff Wilson and find me a success bigger or even comparable to the one his wife has. Jeff is successful because his wife is a super rich and intelligent person on her own. Maybe Jeff Wilson is actually a lot smarter than I thought. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what Jeff does all day, and that is play with sports cards. Okay, so in May 2021, rewind the clock a little bit, Jeff made a video that he has since deleted telling you that he actually sold a good portion of his cards back in February 2021, three months before he made this deleted video I'm gonna show you. And if you remember conveniently, February 2021, when Jeff says he sold all his cards, were when sports card prices were literally, literally at all time record highs. So let's play that clip. Sorry for the smiley face over Jeff. Jeff at the time he deleted this video was threatening legal action against anyone who published it. He even got an account taken off Instagram in part for using this video. So let's roll the clip. When I began to see the prices jumping hundreds or thousands of dollars overnight on a whole bunch of cards throughout the hobby, I said, okay, this is starting to get a little bit overheated. It is time to sell. And I made the decision on February 8th that it was time to sell off a good portion of my cards. Okay, so a man telling you he sold all his cards three months ago really wouldn't matter at all. It's in the context of his other videos that is really telling. You see, Jeff used to tell you cards to either buy or sell in his videos. So if Jeff sold a good portion of his collection in February 2021, wouldn't his videos at this time also be telling you to sell your cards? Then sell those cards. He'd honestly look like a genius if he actually did this, but no, 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 no. Jeff was telling you to buy sports cards from February 2021 to May 2021. It's honestly pretty disgusting. I see why he deleted the video. I'll post the data in the video description. But during the three months when Jeff claims to have sold his cards, he told you to buy 28 out of 35 cards he talked about in his videos. If you took his advice and purchased every single card that he told you to, 
it would have cost you $47,410. You would be down $25,143 if you took his advice. Look, I wouldn't care if he was wrong on all his picks at all. I would not care at all. But he claims he was selling his cards during this time. Why was he telling you to buy? James Harden's rookie cards look like an absolute steal right now. I do not care about the $2 million double dipped PPP loan. I do not care about that at all. That's not a lot of money. It's the fact that he disrespected the card community so much selling cards when he was telling you to buy them. It's absolutely disgusting. He should get back on that little couch of his and go through his data and say, what cards was he selling during that time? It's absolutely freaking disgusting, this guy. But anyways, hope you guys like this little trilogy or however many videos we've done on Jeff Wilson. If any new developments happen, we will be back some other time, some other place, probably soon here on Sports Card Radio. Let's kink things off, though, with that Jeff Wilson hostage, I mean, apology, I mean, explanation video that he posted just the other day. Now, we are going to touch on a couple of things. One thing that I do want to make clear is Jeff Wilson's video was in response to the news, views, and gossip that we posted here on the channel on Sunday, three days ago. I spent, and there are timestamps in this video, exactly one minute and 27 seconds talking about Jeff in a 10 minute video. He very quickly got up and did about a five minute video on his channel in response to that video. So I just wanna make sure everybody is clear on the timetable and the sequencing of events. Now, some very critical things happened after Jeff Wilson posted this video. Inside of this video, just five minutes long, a very well-dressed man, and it appears to be a very nice house. This is my friggin' house. Did what every fantastic politician does in this country and probably also around the world, and that is deflect the attention away from the actual subject at hand. Here inside of his video, starting around the 210 mark, this is the exact transcript in this video, Jeff says, some of you have asked if Sports Card Investor was doing so well, why didn't you move money from Sports Card Investor over to 352? Um, Literally, nobody has suggested that, at least from what I've seen. If you go back and watch the video that I posted three days ago, I don't suggest that Jeff will Wilson had taken money out of his sports card investor business and put it into his marketing business. If you watch the three videos that Ryan has posted over the last three days as well, never once has he suggested that Jeff Wilson take money from one company and put it into another company. But Jeff Wilson's deflection actually works. If you watch this video by EDI Sports Cards, and I'm not criticizing him. In fact, I just subscribed to his channel. I just found it. He's only got 68 subscribers. I tell you what, guys, I'll put his channel link down below. I think you should go over and support him. But in his video, he has a segment in here where he talks about how it's called commingling of funds and transferring of funds. And literally nobody has suggested that that is what Jeff should do. And then when you come over here to Dan, the card man's video doing a PPP loan update, he also talks about similar type things about moving money around in different types of fundraising. No, guys, Jeff Wilson is taking your eye off of the ball. This man got $2 million worth of operating expenses paid for a business, not once, but twice yep, yep. for an online ad business, which just six months after the pandemic started was doing team building activities, non-essential team activities on Zoom. Does this look like a company that is struggling to you? And then on top of that, and more importantly, Jeff went on a million dollar spending spree buying expensive trading cards and going on lavish vacations. No one, absolutely no one suggested that Jeff Wilson take money from one business and transfer it to another. But he could have taken the PPP loan and 
paid it back. He could have taken out a traditional bank loan. He could have done a home equity line of credit. He could have not bought a million dollars worth of trading cards. He could have raised equity in his marketing company. He could have probably got his wildly successful wife to give him a little bit more money. He could have teamed up with his partners over at 352 and all collectively actually raised money. That is the point, guys. This guy took two million dollars not once but twice yep, yep. got a ppp loan that paid all of his operating expenses and it probably paid jeff himself he didn't address that in the video he didn't address his wild spending spree he didn't address his lavish vacations but he did successfully deflect onto something that literally nobody was talking about, taking money from sports card investor, which I guarantee you makes no money. Market Movers app, the YouTube videos, the sponsorships, covering 22 people's salaries, including Jeff Wilson's, is not happening. Nobody suggested that he take money from one business and put it in another. All we were suggesting was maybe a man that could forward million dollar trading cards and first class air flight across the country and across the world, maybe he could have put up his own money into a business, which is not illegal. And the last point I'll make is I know a lot of you guys look at Jeff and he's white, he's well-dressed, he's well-spoken, and he appears to be a nice guy. But if he has spent this money on Lamborghinis, if he had spent it on nightclubs, if he had spent it on strippers, and if his skin pigmentation was maybe a little darker, you probably would be having a much different opinion on him, and maybe he wouldn't be able to successfully deflect the attention away from what appears to be criminal fraud. As you know, with me, it's, uh, it's all about the vibes. But no matter what companies you're thinking about investing in, companies that are playing in the NFT space, I think are pretty smart bets right now. Let's get right into it. Tons of news and rumors to get into about some of your favorite hobby heroes and companies. And then I'll throw Sports Card Radio in at the end and tell you what we're going to be up to. Let's start with everybody's favorite hobby hero, Jeff Wilson, who I believe was last seen in Mexico spending your PPP money. False claims. Here is something that nobody's talked about regarding this guy and this is more speculation than anything else i think jeff was trying to pull like his wife's move build up a company such as sports card investor and then sell it to somebody like ebay or psa and then maybe they would pay him to run it similar to what his wife's situation is now with 22 employees over at sports card investor i actually don't see that happening but if jeff kind of trims the fat on some of this sports card investor stuff maybe gets rid of the app boba Shet. maybe there's value for somebody to pay him to essentially do marketing videos i think in 2020 23, we'll see Jeff either pivot or have to partner with somebody larger than him. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens to him. Sports Card Radio would like to correct the record. To be clear, Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor, did not engage in any PPP loan fraud. Our previous statements to the contrary were simply false. We also acknowledge that our statements that Jeff Wilson did not himself earn the money used to travel and buy sports cards were likewise false. Finally, our accusation that Jeff Wilson engaged in a pump and dump scheme is also false. I also want to apologize to Jeff Wilson for having to find my phone number in his wife's Instagram DMs.
Jeff Wilson and his team of lawyers are out with a 35-page document that outlines several demands and actions that need to be taken by Sports Card Radio. You can read the entire letter in the video description and see the other influencers that were called out in the document. I think it gives some good insights into Jeff's sugar mama, I mean his wife, and also Jeff's mythical role as a tech investor from the southern parts of the United States. I think it's a little creepy Jeff is digging around to find our addresses to send us letters. But that's the hobby world we live in, guys. That's not content. People like Ken Golden, Jeff Wilson, and many others will use scare tactics and bullying to try to silence any dissenting opinion about them. It's a trick as old as time. If you question their role in the sports card world or bruise their massive ego. Jack offs at sports card radio is one. They'll try and silence you with legal letters and demands that to us are about the equivalent of a prince in Nigeria asking for our bank account information. I have a nine figure bank account. For 99.9999% of the hobby, these scare tactics do actually work. It's why you see such soft coverage on many of the hobby elite. Um, many in the hobby look up to people like Ken Golden and Jeff Wilson and aspire to be like them. They even become de facto PR agents for these men. That's drama. Look, we don't apologize for anything over here at Sports Card Radio. We don't retract anything. Jeff is more than capable of going on his own channel, which I believe has uh, 10 times the subscriber reach as ours and talking about his own business and his own success. This is my friggin' house, okay? Jeff is a public figure who took government money, some of which belongs to me. So when we talk about Jeff and his PPP loans or his double dipped dip, dip. PPP loan, this isn't his money we are talking about. That is our money we are talking about. Other influencers were mentioned and even criticized in Jeff Wilson's letter to us. MTG Lion and his video about Jeff Wilson were dissected and criticized. Instagram stories from BK Sports Cards, Dan the Card Man, Hobby Shark, and the Goat Father were also shown. So to summarize, Jeff Wilson took over $2 million of government money during a time he was buying expensive sports cards and going on lavish vacations. We at Sports Card Radio had the audacity to question maybe something weird was going on and he threatens legal action. This is the hobby world we live in. Jeff Wilson is a hero to many of you. Ken Golden is a hero to many of you. And that is just the world we live in. But to all of you who don't worship the ground that Ken Golden and Jeff Wilson walk on, we wish you a very, very sincere Merry Christmas to you and your family and all your friends. And hopefully you guys stay warm and happy and have a great 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 christmas and we will for sure see you here very soon on sports card radio yep 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 look for that yep so i am a lawyer hopefully you guys know a lot of you guys actually complain about how many times i tell you that but yes i am a lawyer i pay my bar association fees every year to force sports card radio to say nothing shady is happening without any any proof is beyond ludicrous you know in the retraction statement so his five-part retraction statement really relies on just bullying right because how in this at this point in time is anyone me sports card radio like anyone who does not have access to the finances of the marketing agency free five two the market mover I, I assume i don't know if it's the same company as sports card index but our sports card investor you need access to both of these financial things and you also need access to jeff's own bank, personal bank accounts to cover. And that's why when an IRS does an audit, they will have access to all three of these things. So as a lawyer, I find that the retraction statement is absolutely heinous because there is a scenario where sports card radio, let's say he makes a retraction and it turns out that it's not right. That a few years later or a few months later, the company's audited and they find out that, whoa, something is not, ha not right here. I feel like if our next video wasn't on this Jeff Wilson thing, our entire fan base would do a class action lawsuit against us. 
So I'm just here so that we won't get sued, honestly. So on today's program, I will talk about the not one, not two, but three people that Jeff has publicly threatened with lawsuits in the sports card community. And if you're not already, you're going to want to sit down for this. Jeff Wilson had somebody in the sports card community try and talk him out of two of these lawsuits. That's right. Think in your head right now who in the sports card community about a year ago tried to calm Jeff down and get him to not sue people. Who do you think tried to do that? Which YouTuber do you think tried to get Jeff to calm down? Uh, I mean, like... Me! So we'll show that conversation I had with Jeff Wilson a year ago on this program today and all the lawsuit threats that Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor, has made to other people in this hobby... We will also show why Jeff was threatening to sue people. Newsflash, it's not about his PPP loans. It's about his coverage of the sports card industry. Um, So buy Will Greer, and that's what I'm doing. I'm buying a bunch of Will Greer rookies right now. And then also maybe take a flyer on Ryan Finley and Jordan uh, Tamu. Uh, Let's get into it. The not one, not two, but three other people Jeff has threatened to sue in the sports card world. And that's just what I know of. Here is our boy, Run Good Life. Can you guys lay off Run Good? God dang. Run Good tweets Jeff Wilson after Jeff was threatening to sue somebody else, actually. That's drama. So maybe we should show those tweets first. Here is Jeff tweeting our trading cards I've never pumped and dumped in my life. That claim is libel. And that clip was pulled from a video where I specifically talked about my favorite cards in my PC not investments. After a reply from our trading cards, which I think is kind of clever actually, Jeff doubles down. Watch yourself. You are entering libel territory here. I have never scammed anyone. I've never done anything remotely illegal. Parentheses even in other markets. And this interaction did not occur as you describe. Jeff Wilson says, I have never done anything remotely illegal. Did Jeff never smoke weed? In college, when marijuana was actually illegal? Like, I actually want to know this. So the next person that gets to interview Jeff Wilson, can you please, this is the only question I actually want to ask Jeff Wilson. Did you smoke marijuana in college when it was not illegal? So I actually want to know this. Did Panini destroy Select and ruin my $500,000 investment in the process. I've got a lot to say about it in today's Sports Card Investor. So anyways, Run Good Life, I think as a good person would do, jumps in to defend the person Jeff Wilson is attacking. Run Good says, and this is about a year ago that this conversation took place, Hey, Jeff Wilson, remember when you accumulated a half million dollars worth of sealed select cases and then put out a video stating that sealed select was the safe investment play? Why not put out a video during your accumulation period? PND characteristics. PND, I believe, refers to pump and dump. Hey, guys, this is the hardest video I've ever had to create. But I got to tell you, honestly, about my pump and dump scheme and the catastrophe that unfolded after. Jeff responds, pump and dump, eh? So you are suggesting I sold those select boxes after putting that video out? Let's hear your false claim here so I can sue the hell out of you. Again, that's from your hobby hero, sports card investor, Jeff Wilson. By Will Greer, because Will Greer uh, has a, a high chance of NFL success, 90%. So about a year ago, I kind of see all this going on. I see Jeff kind of acting like a wild man on Twitter. I jump into the conversation and try to just focus on the real issues, his card investment advice. Jeff says, I always encourage people to do their own research. I don't sell picks. The entire market is down over the last eight months. Again, that's a statement that he made a year ago. So the market has continued to be down over the last year, over the last 20 months now. But I had some big wins despite that. Why look at the last eight months? How about since I started way, way up? So I jump in and say everyone is way, way up who was involved in the hobby many years ago, period. Far more than you are, talking about Jeff Wilson, on a percentage basis. Probably actually prudent to look at how you've done recently and looking at how he's done recently, I'm referring to his sports card investment. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times 
better of an investment than Kyler Murray. So Jeff sent me a link to a video again, and this was a year ago, his three best and worst investments of 2021. I respond with a video he did in the summer of 2021, where he gave seven reasons modern sports cards would spike again. I think it's modern and particularly ultra modern cards. Cards from the last few years, cards of rookies, second year players, third year players, fourth year players that are gonna go up the most. All seven of these things never came true. I said, might wanna do a new video instead of threatening to sue people. Pretty good advice if I ask myself. Really bad look since March, things have collapsed. You must have known some backlash was coming. Probably just the beginning for you. That is a very ominous statement I made a year ago. Boy, I'm actually pretty good at predicting things or maybe making them come true. That's drama. Probably just the beginning for you. Just says fair criticism is fine. Complete lies about how I'm running a pump and dump scheme or selling card picks. And running a cook group is not. There's a difference. I respond just trying to calm the guy down a little bit. Responding to criticism is fine. Correcting people when they may be off base is fine. Threatening to sue people, just stop. But Jeff Wilson obviously did not stop. Jeff responds, it's not the first time he has posted lies about me. I've corrected him and asked him to stop before. And then this person, Hobby Champs, jumps in to defend Jeff Wilson, as you can see. This is all centered around an account Jeff got deleted off Instagram that was criticizing his sports picks. Here is Jeff threatening to sue that person through Instagram messages. It reads, I strongly suggest you false claiming I charge for investment advice. I take libel and disparaging malicious attacks on my character very seriously and will send an army of attorneys after you if this continues. I know all about that. Additionally, if you post any videos or images of me or my content without my permission, I will pursue you for copyright violation and seek damages. And he ends with try me. So Jeff to me is a bully. Okay, this was my impression of Jeff over a year ago. This is a pattern of behavior for Jeff. He should respond to negative criticism, in my opinion, with humor. That's what we've tried to do. Or with words and not threats. That's what we've tried to do or just not respond to it at all, which would be a good option as well. And just keep your head down and keep it moving. All three, honestly, would be great options. We were done talking about the PPP loans until a 35 page letter showed up at our door. Guys, three weeks after I got this, a similar threat from Ken Golden. Jack offs at Sports Card Radio. I'm doing a video going over his cards that ended in one of his auctions. Some of the stuff, honestly, I would buy from Golden Auctions if it ever fell into my limited price range. I have a nine-figure bank account. I probably wouldn't do videos essentially promoting his auction house if Jeff Wilson did something in the hobby worth talking about would potentially make him look good. I'd love to talk about it. I'd love to cover it, honestly. However, I did download the Market Movers app, his paid app that he charges for, the other day. And compared to Card Ladder, honestly, it sucks. Something like Card Ladder is a way, way, way better piece of software, in my opinion, than mark Market Movers, but to each their own there. And did I just say something good about a company owned by PSA and also owned by Golden? Hopefully you might have caught that. And until next time, everybody out there, I hope you're having a good day. And Jeff Wilson, you can suck my PPP. Yeah. Now, when it pertains to Jeff Wilson's document, we have sat down with our legal team over here at Sports Card Radio, and they've instructed me that I can point out some of the errors, and as my attorneys put it, the actual legal mishaps and missteps that they had putting this document together inside the document. And people on the live stream were commenting that this must be true. No, it is actually not true. Inside the document, it says you, which is sports card radio, will likely be subject to jurisdiction on the East Coast where California's anti-slap statutes will not be applied. The first thing you do when you get sued, it doesn't matter what it is, even criminal lawsuits, you fight over the jurisdiction. That is the first thing in almost 99 
99% of cases, every single attorney will fight the jurisdiction. And in this case, I really don't care if this is heard out here in California or where Jeff resides in Georgia, because unlike what this document says, the anti slap statute actually does apply to Georgia. And in fact, here's on a government website saying that despite the lack of up to date Georgia specific resources slap litigants with claims arising under Georgia law may find it helpful to consult California researches. The Georgia statute was modeled after California's and contains many of the same substantive provisions case law interpreting the California statute is well developed and there is an abundance of secondary sources that focus on slap litigation, meaning that Jeff Wilson cannot file a frivolous lawsuit trying to squelch our free speech over here at Sports Card Radio without facing very significant, we're talking about significant penalties to doing so, and they would come very quick and very easily. Because also, when you look at the Georgia statute of protected speech, it's anything that fi files under the First Amendment, but also any written or oral statements or written or petitions made in the place of open public, like a YouTube channel, in connection with an issue a public issue or concern you can google it jeff wilson's ppp loan where he got not one but two loans yeah, yeah. totaling over two million dollars is a public record and it is something of public concern the reason why we know that is if you look at what the secret service in atlanta georgia is investigating they are hunting down PPP loan theft and PPP loan fraud. If you go to the SBA's own website, which administered the PPP loan, they allow you to report fraud, waste, and abuse. The government themselves wants the average citizen and the public to report fraud, waste, and abuse of PPP loan fraud. Um, and so you're telling me the SBA wants the public and wants people to identify PPP loan fraud, but somehow I can't discuss this on YouTube considering Jeff Wilson got over $2 million in his operating expenses paid for a marketing company and then balled out buying trading cards and going on vacations. Somehow I am not supposed to discuss that publicly, but the SBA is allowing people to report this on their own website. And on top of that, if they find actual fraud is found, they will give you, I believe, up to 30 percent of the money recovered, which in Jeff Wilson's case would be several hundred thousand dollars. Not only that, you had the PPP and Bank Fraud Enforcement Act of 2022, that is Bill H.R. 7352, signed into law by President Joe Biden that establishes a 10-year statute of limitation for criminal charges and civil enforcement against a borrower who engaged in fraud in respect to the Paycheck Protection Program. Criminally. Paycheck Protection Program fraud is an issue of public concern. It is something that is actively being investigated, so much so that they extended the statute of limitations to an unprecedented 10 years. So have fun. Any of you that took out PPP loans, now you've got a 10 year statute of limitations. Let, let them go. And if you don't think they're going to go after you, well, you're wrong. Speaking of more things that are wrong inside of this document, they say, nor do you, referring to Sports Card Radio, have any basis to portray 352, which is Jeff Wilson's marketing company, as a company on the brink of insolvency because it joined the million of American companies that were provided with PPP. PPP loans. This is a factually false statement, and my attorney can't believe they put something like this in here. They say I have no basis to portray 352 as a company on the brink of insolvency. Well, unfortunately, when you come over to Jeff Wilson's PPP loan and attack content video, here's what he said. He said 352 marketing clients were affected and cut back on their marketing spend as a result of 352's revenues plummeted 
So Jeff Wilson said himself that revenues plummeted over at 352 and they have more than 50 full-time employees and they took out two PPP loans for the sole purpose of paying those employees and keeping the business operating. So revenues plummeted and they had to take a government bailout loan to keep the business operating. Those are not my words. Those are Jeff Wilson's own words. And so when his attorney says, I don't have any basis to portray 352 as a company on the brink of insolvency, I would just refer you to Jeff Wilson's own word saying revenue plummeted, his business needed a loan to continue to operate. On top of that, you had a global pandemic. I think it was safe to assume a lot of businesses were in trouble during that time. Drop them. More lies and more mistakes made by Jeff's low budget attorney. He says the PPP loan program wasn't based on whether a business could actually make payroll or was on the verge of failing. This is 100% categorically false. Jeff Wilson took out not one, but actually two you dip, dip. PPP loans. And his second draw of the PPP loan, the second million that he took, actually required him to demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts between 2019 and 2020. So it's categorically false when his attorney says that the PPP loan program wasn't based on whether a business could actually make payroll or was on the verge of failing. That is not true because it required you to show a 25% at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts between 2019 and 2020 at the company. Now, obviously our strongest statute and the strongest position that sports card radio sits in is Jeff Wilson is a public figure and he prances around card shows and prances around the industry wanting to be a public figure in the industry. The burden of proof is on Jeff Wilson, not myself. There's been a lot of comments on my videos and others saying I have to do all this. I have to do something. I don't have to do anything over here at Sports Card Radio. This is not a criminal lawsuit against myself. Jeff Wilson, the burden of proof is on him and his attorneys, and he not only has to approve that my speech doesn't fall under the First Amendment, doesn't fall under something of public interest, but also that I must act with actual malice when I've said the things with Jeff Wilson. That's drama. And many of you that have a smooth brain might not understand what actual malice is, and it's best described as so inherently improbable that only a reckless man would have put them in circulation. Would a reckless man would see another man getting a $2 million loan and then buying baseball cards and going on lavish vacations? Would a reckless man wonder where some of that money might have come from? And on top of that, when we're discussing PPP loan, a congressional report, which was just finished in December, says financial technology companies fueled rampant PPP loan fraud. So when we're talking about PPP loan fraud, it is not, and I repeat, not so inherently improbable that only a reckless man would put them in circulation. There was a lot of PPP loan fraud. You can Google it. So much so that the president of the United States signed a law extending the statute of limitations to 10 years. So much so that the U.S. Secret Service across this country, the FBI, the DOJ, is investigating PPP loan fraud as we speak. Sports Card Radio has been here before. We were here with Ken Golden like a month ago. Jack offs at Sports Card Radio is one. We've been here when it refers to Brian Gray of Leaf Trading Cards. We've been here when it comes to Ga David Gelf Gelfman of Ripping Wax. We've been here with numerous breakers suggesting we defame them when it came to Raz's 
We're talking over a decade ago. The burden of proof is on Jeff Wilson, not on Sports Card Radio. And the burden of proof for Jeff Wilson versus Sports Card Radio is so steep. That is why he sent over a scare letter like they often do, because if he took it the full distance and actually filed it in some kind of courtroom, it opens up Jeff Wilson to a lot of things that he doesn't want to get into, including anti-slap protections and including a further investigation into criminal fraud, which have jail sentences when we're talking about the numbers that we're talking about here when it refers to this PPP loan. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day out there. Thank you for all your support. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. And for the haters, suck my fucking PPP. You did. Now, your hobby hero, Jeff Wilson. Only 20 of them sold. Was a model for a company that he ran with his wife to take advantage of those masking requirements that were swept across many of the liberal states and across this country. His photos, in fact, are still up on Amazon if you search the company Face Mask Friend. Now, the interesting thing is he received a trademark complaint from a company that claimed a trademark and he actually lost that and the company had to be dissolved and shut down. It appears a company out of China is now selling these things. Maybe they are not subject to the trademark infringement, but it, what is odd is the sports card investor has threatened a lot of lawsuits in this hobby, including one here to sports card or radio, including he's threatened lawsuits for copyright infringement, something that Jeff Wilson is actually guilty of. You can Google it. Now, something Jeff Wilson is also guilty of of is probably SEC violations when it comes to providing financial advice. When you go back to the Wayback Machine on his website back in October of 2020, he actually had a tab on his website for card picks. And when you clicked on that website, it brought you to a page that showed you cards that he was buying and selling this week. And it was a page only available to Market Movers members. So when you come over here and look at some of the pricing and some of the benefits, quote unquote benefits of being a market Market Movers member, it gave you cards that they were buying, essentially the picks that they were making in terms of their cards. There was a private investors forum. In, and interesting that he re, uses the term investors there. There was a premium Discord access. So what was happening was Jeff was allowing the people that were paying either $24.99 a month or $49.99 a month, basically front run the general public. So what he was doing, he was saying, when it comes to Ben Simmons, I am buying he was selling that to his private investors group he was selling that access those people would go and buy up those cards then they would dump that information on to the common man in the form of a video or in a later article some people might even refer to this as a quote pump and dump as you were selling information to insiders and then later dumping that information and likely dumping some of those cards on to the common person that would not pay for your service. Also in the disclaimer of the investor website, it says investing in sports cards involves substantial risk and is not suitable for everybody. The following statement where he says, we do not provide financial advice is not a catch all. And believe it or not, despite what you see here on YouTube does not insulate you from SEC law that requires you to be a registered investment advisor with certain types of of credentials in order to give financial advice. You can Google it. In fact, the SEC in its own documents really broadly describes what an investor advisor is, but it's somebody that gives advice about market trends, advice in the form of statistical or historical data, something definitely Je what Jeff Wilson was doing. The only people that actually can actually charge for trading card advice, trading card picks, any kind of advice on what collectibles to buy and sell are people with like CFA certifications, PFS, people that pass their series 65 exams, people that work for broker dealers, people with three letter acronyms after their name. Last time I've checked, Jeff Wilson has not passed the series 65 
Last time I've checked, he's not a broker dealer. Jeff Wilson is likely guilty of some kind of security fraud and potentially a pump and dump scheme as well. Criminally. This is why he's gone back through his YouTube page and he's deleted many, many videos where he's talked about these types of things. He's talked about trading cards as an, a quote asset class. He's talked about them alongside the stock market and other investments. He's portrayed himself as this great investor and now he's pitching you this new investment and this is also why he changed his own website to take away card picks that he was actually selling for a fee. All of these things are actually against the law. You should be ashamed of yourself. investors and welcome to an extremely important show because I feel like what I am going to tell you about today is going to revolutionize sports card investing and I do not throw that term out around lightly but I am that excited about what dibs is going to do to the sports card investing space. <laughs> I think this is the best combination I have seen of marketplaces, fractional ownership, NFTs, blockchain, digital. It is all together. And the second that Evan showed this concept to me several months ago, I said, I want to be one of your very first investors. Let me write a check today and get in as an early investor in this thing because I love it. And I did. And I also said, the moment this gets ready to launch, I want to tell my sports card investor audience all about it. And here we are. Online fractional marketplace Dibs closed down on Wednesday, less than two years after it raised $13 million from investors that included Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor, PSA owner Nat Turner, and athletes that included Chris Paul, Kevin Love, and Chris Bryant. Yep. The business model for Dibs was they essentially bought some cards and stored them over at the PWCC vault and then sold fractional ownership in those cards and they would make money off the transaction fees. Turns out this is a really stupid idea. So you can get in before the crowds on Dibs. Collectors like to clutch, hold, and fondle their cards. This has been true since the beginning of time. Kids used to put 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle cards in their bike spokes. Today, they put them in expensive plastic slabs. Oh my God, that's out. For some reason, all these tech bro dorks who got into the hobby around COVID thought they could turn your card collection into an E-Trade portfolio. Turns out they were wrong. Boba Shack. Dibs will actually remain a company so the guy running it can save some face. They say they will focus on their tokenization as a service business, which literally everyone watching has no idea what the f that means. That's not content. So what does it all mean? Businesses come and go, some fail, some succeed. This one ended rather abruptly. For me, it does call into question the supposed success of the sports card investor, Jeff Wilson. This is a company he lists on his website as a fast growing startup. I'm still waiting to find out what successful businesses Jeff Wilson has been involved with. Maybe some of you dorks who said we shouldn't talk about his PPP loans and the optics surrounding those can fill me in. His 352 marketing business, he said himself, the revenue with that plummeted during COVID. And when the pandemic hit, many of 352's clients were affected and cut back on their marketing spend. As a result, 352's revenue plummeted. It was why he was able to receive two PPP loans to begin with. Yep, yep. We could also get into the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars Jeff is down investing in actual sports cards. James Harden's rookie cards look like an absolute steal right now. But I'm sure you influencer dorks who make excuses for Jeff and essentially act as his PR agent will fill me in on his updated LinkedIn profile. It should also be noted that Jeff Wilson told you to buy NFTs and sports cards at the very, very top of those markets. If Jeff really believed in those things, especially NFTs, 
wouldn't he be telling you to buy those things now that the prices have fallen out? And you probably, I mean, you, you could have a nice, stable, long-term consensual relationship with, with your with your <laughs> with board my, with your board ape my board ape yeah bo here's the secret to jeff he only tells you what to buy if he's invested in the card or the product himself that way he can sell it to you some people have figured this out some people have not either way if you want to talk more about jeff wilson join us for our live stream tonight at 5 30 p.m pacific 8 30 p.m eastern time we will talk about Jeff Wilson and all the other news items surrounding the hobby. Haters of the program are welcome, and we hope to see some of you former Dibs investors there. What is going on? How are you doing tonight? I am doing excellent. I have in front of me the demand for retraction or better known as the lawsuit threats that Jeff Wilson and his army of attorneys sent over to us back in, I don't Oh, it says December 22nd on this sheet of paper. And I just want to flip to the second page where it says we accuse Jeff of not actually ever achieving personal success. And how could we do that? Because of his 352 business that needed two uh, PPP loans because of his uh, sports card investor business and that employs 22 people. Uh, you know, how could we uh, how, how could we have the audacity to, to you know, wonder how he's throwing around uh, money at card shows, buying five hundred thousand dollar cards? It does say here on about line eight hundreds of this thirty five page lawsuit. It does mention the company dibs as something we should, you know, should have known that this was a success of Jeff's. And this was in December. And here we are, guys. I have to check my phone. It's March. 16th 2023 so just gosh three short months later and this company that jeff and his army of attorneys says was a success went out of fucking business excuse my language so actually in this demand to retraction to us i actually if jeff wilson and your lawyers are watching wade grunberg and wilson llc i demand that you retract dibs out of your demand for retraction so milly vanilli that's how i wanted to start the night just kind of wanted to demand i actually wanted to have our own demand for retraction take dibs out of here they are out of business they've moved on to uh tokenization as a service or whatever the heck that is uh they've pivoted their business much like starstock did remember that a few months ago they pivoted their business to nfts we've seen how it's successful that has gone for them I think they still have an eight month backlog over there, but that's how we start the night. I just wanted to, to, to let it be known to Jeff Wilson and his army of attorneys. We actually demand that you retract dibs out of that worthless piece of garbage you sent us three months ago, better known as a fake fucking lawsuit. So <laughs> I'm a little fired up this, uh, this evening. It's a lovely day. Oh my God. It was like 70 degrees. First nice day we've had in California in two months. I know we've been spoiled for, uh, with about, uh, 40, uh, years of, of good weather in our 41 years of life. So, uh, you know, we've had a few bad months of weather in California today was spectacular. Went out, cut the rose bushes, did a little yard work. Hopefully you got them. I'm, I'm so pale and white. We need to get a little sun and get a little crisper. But uh, yeah, and we, we, I actually tried to go on dibs. I tried to go on dibs today and bid on cards. That's what we like to do actually on this show. We like to bid on cards, either eBay, ComC, uh, Golden, uh, PWCC, anybody. I'll bid on anybody's site. I went to dibs today and they're freaking closed. So you look at all those positive reviews. Look at all these investors that they've had. You know, so who's who in the athlete world? Who's who in, in the card world? Jeff Wilson Literally, when he, I guess, met the founder of this company, ripped out his checkbook and wrote him a check. And literally less than two years after they raised uh, not one million, not two million, not three million, but $13 million, Dibs went out of business, guys. So what are your thoughts on, uh, on, on our demand for retraction and Dibs? Well, you know, I think we're kind of at that point where a lot of these businesses kind of got hyped up during the kind of the easy money days of not only kind of the sports card world, but getting financing and 
quote unquote investors to invest into your business. And, you know, look, we at first started with what star sock and now we're seeing dibs. There's been a handful of other ones over time, but now we're seeing that over at alt, I think people are having uh, struggles over there actually withdrawing money. They're blaming it on a payment processor, which kind of flash flashes us back to our online poker days when you couldn't, withdraw from full tilt. I think they blamed it on the payment processor before they blamed it on themselves kind of running off with the money. And so we'll see if anybody ran off with the money over at alt or any of these other platforms. It appears at least from, I don't know how many people are using dibs, but it appears that people are being cashed out, if you will, or they are getting kind of the value that they might've had on the site. We don't have quite uh, maybe a situ maybe the situation over at Alt is a little bit more dire, considering you can't withdraw money from the web. I'm literally kind of wired. everything off of Alt. I spent actually part of the day today clicking everything off for sale, and then literally sending everything to the PSA vault, which is probably literally next door. So I I think the fact that Alt you haven't been able to withdraw your money. It's been several weeks. It was before the SVP uh, uh, or SVB bank or the Silicon Valley bank thing that you couldn't withdraw your money on alt. Something weird is going on over there. Something weird. And so I don't like it. And I think if you have cards or any kind of significant cards or money on alt, I would withdraw uh, immediately or get the cards off immediately. That's my advice. I'm doing the, the same. I have literally pff, fucking probably a thousand cards. I like, I, you know, I, 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 I like I like the service. I just think the management team and the people they hired and they blew, blew through a lot of the investment money like Dibs did. And I think we're, we're probably alt headed for a train wreck. So if you have any significant money or cards tied up on alt, get it off. That would be my advice. So I'm sure we'll hear from their lawyers uh, in, in probably a couple of weeks because of those statements, but I don't care. So. Well, we did hear from Dibs. This was just a couple of months ago. I think they wanted to do some kind of like sports card radio drop or something. I think you had, yeah. uh, you made reference of that on At the this very video end. here that they actually emailed us this there, email. There. I think this was back in September that whether it be creating an event for sports card radio, perhaps one of our drops could be by sports card radio adding money to an account for you to play around and collect some cards. If you like, look, I, I, I don't know if people, we, we certainly don't make this public every day. Um, but boy, every single one of these kind of upstart companies and companies that got investment money, every single one from whatnot to dibs, to alt to all of them have emailed us trying to partner with us trying to offer us uh, different types of money and you know we actually do use some discretion over here at sports car radio it'd be easy just to say yes to all these types of things like jeff wilson uh, essentially what did he say when he was sitting on the couch like he literally jumped up the minute he heard about dibs he jumped up wanted to tell his audience about it and write them a check not only does jeff wilson quote unquote, invest in dibs. He actually buys himself a job. Okay. He invests in the company and then he has to go out and be the marketing team for it. Go out and create all these videos. You literally showed just one video of Jeff talking about this on your video, but he did a number of videos for dibs. I think lot. he even did videos on dibs, own YouTube channel. So this yeah. guy, like he calls himself an investor. No, he actually just buys himself a job working for a, another company and it look maybe he likes working maybe he was trying to get away from a significant other at home i don't know what he's trying to do but i tell you what we, usually when you're an investor you give your money and then you sit around and watch it grow whereas jeff actually gives them money and then he gets on his couch and introduces products like dibs to his audience which again very quickly go out of business not only does he invest in dibs but he claims it as a success when he sent over that a lawsuit threat that many of you thought we were very scared of over here at sports card radio and we were very nervous of and we're just so intimidated by jeff wilson's lawyers we're certainly not intimidated by a guy who again buys himself a job and then has that job go under from an investment perspective, he basically just worked for free for the last, uh, what, year and a half promoting dibs.
I think the title of today's uh, live stream was Jeff Wilson is hot. And I think you've done a couple of videos on him. And I think he had to sit down on the couch with a, a young lady who's not his wife. So I was wondering, maybe we could get Kim Wilson on here in the future and ask her opinion about Jeff hosting a weekly podcast with somebody that's, you know, slightly maybe younger than his wife. And he's spending some intimate time on a couch <laughs> with somebody that is, is not his wife, having intimate conversations about having intimate relationships with NFTs and board apes and those types of things. And, and certainly business conversations. I was, you know, wondering what, you know, he was hot. It seemed like in one of his videos, he was a little hot. He's hot at the haters. He's using us as motivation. He's sending over those lawsuit threats that people think that, uh, you know, have us very scared over here at Sports Card Radio. Um, clearly we are. And so like he was really hot. And so we talked about how Jeff Wilson was really hot and really angry. And I think you made a point about, you know, the audacity of that. Somebody that got two PPP loans has been buying grail cards that everybody in the chat just would love the opportunity to probably just hold in their hand, let alone have the finances to purchase. And he's hot. What is Jeff Wilson so hot about, Ryan? I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic question. I, I, I mean, if shoot, if the government wanted to give me two, uh, two million dollars, uh, tax, uh, tax free, totally written off, totally forgiven, and you're still mad about it, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know what his real problem is. He, he's doing these little podcasts now. Um, they're painful to watch. Anytime this guy's talking about cards, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, I mean, going back and, and watching this old Dibs video that's two years old and he's so excited and he invested all this money and he's kind of, kind of trying to get all his people, uh, you know, to sign up for Dibs. He's literally in the video talking about, oh, go down and sign up for the email and get pre-access and blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, we're watching, now, now we're watching this video. I'm getting enthralled again, but here he is on the, here he is on the couch. Anytime this guy talks about cards, it's literally like nails on a chalkboard. So sometimes when he talks about other stuff, you know, he can sound somewhat intelligent, but I'm not sure what's true or what's not. Again, he sent us over a 35 page document that has dibs listed as his success. And that's full of crap. There were literally people in the sports card community who went on live streams and read the lawsuit like verbatim. And we're like, Oh man, that's a really good point. His lawyer made and oh that, and oh that. I wonder if these guys will go back and retract those statements that they made. Cause a lot of stuff in there is full of crap. And the only sign of success that we've been able to see from Jeff Wilson over the years is somebody told me how much his wife sold her business for social news desks back many years ago. And it's a crap ton of money. It is a crap ton of money. Somebody said that, so, hey, social news desks sold for X amount of dollars to this company. It's a lot of money. It would be enough money for Jeff to sit on the couch here with this other woman and buy $500,000 baseball cards. So bottom line, Jeff, to me, especially when he speaks about cards, is just a total fraud. And he, and he continues, boy, he's been, he's kind of been frauding this industry for about two or three years going on talking about Ben Simmons and buying James Harden. And his best advice might've been buying Will Greer over Kyler Murray. That might've been his best advice. So with Jeff, look, People, you know, freaked out a couple of weeks ago when we started saying nice things about him. We try to be objective on the show. If Jeff Wilson does something good, we might talk about it. If he comes out with an app that is spectacular, we might use it. But this guy, time after time after time, has documented failures in the sports card industry, either with cards he's purchased, either with the sports card investor company that he runs. Now, if sports card investor was him and like two other people running it, I'd be like, yeah, he probably does make money on, on the website. It's there's, there's potential where he could make money. But in the lawsuit, it talks about how he has 20, 30 people working over at Sports Card Investor. How much does that cost? What's the outlay on that? He rents a place, I think, in Atlanta. What's the cost on that? You know, there's cost associated, you know, with his business. So for me, I haven't been able to see the documented successes that Jeff Wilson so much wants people to see. You know, he, Jeff Wilson, you know, wants to be a success. He said on his little podcast, he was voted most likely to succeed in high school. He has a chip on his shoulder. Even to this day, I don't know how old this guy is. What is he like 40, 45 years old? And he still has a chip on his shoulder. Boy, when I, I, 
I, you know, I'm brushing the weed leaves off my shoulder when I get up in the morning. You know, I sure as heck ain't trying to grind or prove anybody wrong or, you know, go after the haters or any of that. It's like, yo, I'm trying to chill at this point in my life. Certainly there was points in my life where I was getting up and getting on Ticketmaster and getting on StubHub and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding, you know, 80 hours, 100 hours a week. That was like literally all I would think about would be making money. Those, you know, I was a little younger then. So Jeff clearly has a lot of ambition. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But when you have that much ambition, when you put yourself out there that much, when you want people to, you know, kind of praise you for these successes, and then you have people like us that kind of look and be like, oh, what, Dibs, uh, IVS Network, uh, Neighborly, or whatever these companies that we've never heard of. And we live out near San Francisco. So when some guy says he's a tech investor, guys, we know tech investors who own National Treasure Steph Curry cards, uh, PSA 10 Michael Jordan rookie cards, who invest millions of dollars in the sports card market, who are real tech investors because they invested in Facebook, Tesla, uh, Microsoft, Google, uh, you, you name what, you name whatever. We know, we know some of those people. Jeff does not scream a uh, tech investor to us. So look, he's one of the biggest names in the, in the hobby. He has what? 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. He, uh, uh, him along with Jab's family and Pac-Man are some of the most watched, uh, you know, people in the sports card space. He says himself that a lot of people come here first. You come to the hobby first. So I think a lot of people, they get on us. They want to, oh, you know, be good for the hobby and make content that's good for the hobby. I would question if Jeff Wilson's content is good for the hobby. N 99 times out of 100, I'd probably rather him watch a Pac-Man video. And honestly, I don't watch a lot of Jeff's family stuff, but it's probably a little more tame than Jeff Wilson trying to hawk dibs down your throat. You know, the worst thing Jeff's probably does is hawk his Patreon and probably rip you off if you buy into his breaks. And kick his dog and kick his wife out of his house. You know, that's what Jeb's family is known for. Jeff is known for repeatedly failing at his sports card investments. And now one of the companies he invested in, in sports cards, failed. Failed. So do we need to go through those other fucking companies that Jeff listed on the fucking document he sent it? Should, should I look into those companies and see what, what's going on over there? I mean, what if we went down the list and all the companies, except Jeff's wife's, that sold for 20 million. Did I say that out loud? But <laughs> social news desks sold for a lot of money. I can't, I can't find anything that, that Jeff has done that has been like a huge success. Doesn't mean he's a loser. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy. But when you call yourself the sports card investor, when you're the biggest name in the space, I think it's okay to analyze, A, your investments. When you call yourself, the sports card investor, I think it's okay to analyze this guy's investments. And that's what we've tried to do. We've tried to analyze his investments and they've been fucking horrible, both on the card space and now with dibs failing. So I'm sure I will get another 35 pages next week from his lawyer, but. But where were all the investors telling you to buy LA De La Cruz the same way they told you to buy Luca? Trey, Zion, and Ja. I would buy Ja Morant cards. With the market and card prices at near two to three year lows, is it now a good time to be investing in some sports cards? Jeff Wilson. Bo Bichette. Got so much backlash for telling you to buy at the literal all time highs of the sports card market. Star stock. That he's scared to make content about actual sports cards investing anymore. Here he is saying just the other day that he's trying to make content that is positive, welcoming, showcases kid collectors, and the father-son connection. Where was any of this talk when the market was at its very peak, Jeff? I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Baseball is one of the few sports where a player can 10x his value overnight. When was the last time a quarterback in football besides Brock Purdy 10x their value? Damar Hamlin, cards probably 10x in value last year, but he nearly had to lose his life to do so. Jalen Hurts, 
The Eagles quarterback, his cards did go up in value, but in the case of his Prism rookie, it appears you could have only 5 extra your money if you bought at the lows and sold at the very, very, very high points. Patrick Mahomes' cards, for example, actually went down in a year in which he won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Unfortunately for you in the hobby, Jeff Wilson doesn't watch much baseball. Boba Shack. It's clear in the videos that he makes and the way he talks about the game. And I said, this is going to be huge. Sports cards from an investing standpoint is going to be huge. This is going to be the next big thing. Now, Stidham cards have been hot. They have been hot for the last three months. And you can see from this chart that they have been going up and up and up since March. During the COVID sports card boom, you had the likes of Jeff Wilson and countless imitators of his pumping and pushing modern sports cards as investments. Those same influencers say how much they care about the hobby. But the damage done by the COVID pumpers and influencers will be felt for years. If you thought year one of sports card investor was good, you haven't seen anything coming yet. During the COVID boom, these pumpers and influencers never held anyone accountable in this industry. Shady breakers were given platforms. Card trimmers were seemingly forgiven for their past sins. The hobby positivity crowd even pumped fractional marketplaces. Shady people and shady businesses were not only put in the spotlight, they were put on a pedestal. If you go on a starstock.com and sign up and enter referral code SCI, Panini, Tops, and the grading companies were treated like royalty by hobby newbies during the COVID card boom. Anyone with any experience in the hobby couldn't help but laugh and shake their head. Think about all the money and cards being held by Starstock's six-month shipping backlog. Think about all the money wasted on Luca, Trey, Ja, and Zion cards, let alone the money wasted on players with half the talent of those guys. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. The industry did a horrible job policing and checking itself during the COVID boom. And the damage done from that will be felt for years. We are two and a half years into feeling that damage. And there is really no end in sight. We've seen companies like Starstock, Dibs, and PWCC all scramble for the exits or be sold for scraps. Meanwhile, these influencers who were sponsored by these companies, sponsored by the likes of Starstock, Dibs, and PWCC, still want to stand behind a podium and preach positivity. As you know, with me, it's, uh, it's all about the vibes. 352 and Sports Card Investor are two completely separate businesses. Um, my team at 352, I own a digital agency called 352. 352 took out two PPP loans for the sole purpose of paying those employees and keeping the business operating during a time when sales dropped significantly. Uh, we do a lot of innovation work, growth work. And as part of that, we do marketing, build software, build websites. I have an awesome team there. Nick, great designer, helped me with the sports card investor brand. Peter J and Blake helped build the very first version of the website. Option. Correct. 352 and sports card investor are two completely separate businesses. Brad has been absolutely an awesome developer. He architected most of the Market Movers data platform. Rich. Thankfully, Sports Card Investor did not need a PPP loan during the pandemic, nor did we apply for one, nor did we take one. Rich, uh, awesome member of my leadership team, helped Brad as well. Uh, Logan, many, many others at 352 have participated and really helped build uh, Market Movers along the way. Thanks. 352 and Sports Card Investor are two completely separate businesses. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false. I want the truth! This is absolutely 100% false. I want the truth! 
Congress will push me to raise taxes and I'll say no. And they'll push and I'll say no. And they'll push again and I'll say to them, read my lips. No. So while others are intentionally perpetuating lies about me for the purpose of getting views and gaining notoriety, I am here to set the record straight. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. I want the truth! Is this, for sure? Is this true? <laughs> no, it's not true. I'll, I'll pull back the curtain. It's just, it was staged, guys. Okay? It was just. Oh, joking. that was last week in Dallas. Yes, we're okay, joking, gotcha. okay? I'm, I'm I was worried. I'm, I'm pulling back the curtain. I'm shattering the glass. It was all staged. I want the truth. Hey, I'm, I'm here to kill and be killed. 352 and Sports Card Investor are two completely separate businesses. I want the truth. In Stockton, California. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor, spent at least $2.5 million on sports cards from February 2020 through November 2022. That according to a video done in April by MindCycle Cards. A link to the spreadsheet in the video is in the description showing all the cards. So Jeff spent $2 million on cards during the pandemic. Jeff conveniently got a $2 million government forgiven PPP loan for another business he ran called 352. When we at Sports Card Radio questioned how a man spent $2 million on sports cards during the pandemic, but also got a $2 million PPP loan that was meant for struggling businesses, the people with street smarts in the industry certainly raised an eyebrow. Some content creators with no street smarts, and I won't name them here, but I maybe will in a lawsuit later, said that Sports Card Radio better be telling the truth and that there was no way Jeff was commingling his 352 business and his sports card investor business. They said the two businesses had nothing to do with each other. That's what we were told. 352 and Sports Card Investor are two completely separate businesses. Jeff Wilson was so furious that we questioned how he was able to spend $2 million on sports cards, but also had a struggling other business. Jeff, in fact, sent a 35-page document to my home address threatening legal action. You are not the person that I have ever thought about suing. That was over six months ago. What we learned today is that Jeff Wilson supposedly employs 50 people at his 352 agency. Jeff personally name dropped six of his 50 employees that work at 352 and said that many, many other of his 352 employees have worked on and built sports card investor and market movers. Many, many others at 352 have participated and really helped build uh, market movers along the way. I find it interesting that Jeff never mentioned that 352 helped build his sports card investor business in December of 2022 when people were discussing his PPP loans. I would have several questions for Jeff. Did some of the PPP money used to pay employees at your 352 business? Were those employees also working on your sports card investor business? Jeff, what was your sports card investor business paying your 352 business for the work being done? Did your sports card investor business pay 352 at all? That would be a very important question. Yeah. Jeff, why didn't you mention the connection between the two businesses when you were on your couch in December of 2022 and essentially accused sports card radio of lying? So while others are intentionally perpetuating lies about me for the purpose of getting views and gaining notoriety, I am here to set the record straight. Jeff, why isn't the connection to 352 and Sports Card Investor mentioned in the 35-page lawsuit threat you sent to my home address in December of 2022? Jeff, in fact, went to great lengths to explain how the two businesses were separate. Jeff, what was your salary compensation you were paid at 352, the company that needed a $2 million? government forgiven PPP loan. 
why Jeff does it seem like your sports card investor business and your card purchases picked up steam right around the time your 352 company got a $2 million PPP loan. At the very least, the optics still look horrible. What's happened? It's not surprising to me at all that the influencers who said we'd better be telling the truth about sports card investor didn't do any research at all on sports card investor and his business. When people hear anything negative going on in the hobby, they will rush to a microphone to tamp it down and wag fingers at sports card radio. I wanna say this, sports card radio, you should be ashamed of yourself. I believe that sports card investor used PPP money fraudulently to build his sports card investor business. It appears that Jeff used PPP loan money to pay his 352 employees to work on his sports card investor business and likely wasn't paying his 352 business for the work. Jeff essentially used government money to help build his sports card investor business. PPP loans were meant to pay employees at struggling businesses. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has proven to me that Jeff and his businesses were legitimately struggling at the time. Jeff could even help drive down the revenue numbers at his 352 business. Why? Because they may have been working essentially for free for his sports card investor business. One of my other businesses, a web development and digital marketing agency called 352, got crushed early in the pandemic. Remember, to get a second PPP loan, you had to prove your business went down 25% during the pandemic. What better way to drive down business and revenue than having your employees working on another business you own and not paying 352 for the work? Yeah. Jeff, you are welcome to come on Sports Card Radio and answer all the questions I have asked you and more. You will need to send a formal letter to us stating that we are relieved of all legal liability. That has to come first. But if I receive something from your lawyer saying that I won't get sued, you are welcome to come on Sports Card Radio and tell us how we just perpetually lie about you for views and likes. And for everybody who doesn't like this content, I have these words for you. Suck my fucking PPP. I want the truth.